is up guys? Welcome back to another GeekoWatt video and in today's video I'm going to be building an awesome RTX 3080 gaming PC build. I'm going to run you through all the parts that we chose and why for this system, putting it together from start right through to the finish. We're then of course going to boot the system up to see not just how good it looks when it's all powered up but how it performed in some of the biggest titles out there. We're talking Apex Legends, the brand new Call of Duty Warzone update, Cyber Punk and many more. So buckle in, make sure to get subscribed if you aren't already, but let's do this. Today's video has been made possible by Seagate and their exciting global gaming event which they're hosting on the 24th of June. You can watch it live on YouTube or Twitch and you don't want to miss it as they'll be looking at the latest trends in PC gaming, focusing specifically on PCIe Gen 4, how it could unlock faster speeds, better graphics and overall a much better gaming experience. With partners like Razer, MSI and AMD all tuning in for the fun as well, you don't want to miss out and you can tune in at the links in the description below. We're going to kick this build off as usual by installing as many components into the motherboard as we can. This is MSI's B550 Tomahawk board and here's five reasons why it's the perfect board for this build. It's got four RAM DIMM slots for dual channel memory performance, support for the latest PCIe Gen 4 M.2 SSDs, a built-in rear I.O. shield and a really solid rear I.O. as well as support for up to a Ryzen 9 5950X. It's a great board and works perfectly for the system that we're trying to build today. I'm going to be pairing this B550 board with one of AMD's latest processors. This here is their Ryzen 5 5600X, a 6 core 12 thread powerhouse of a CPU that's one of the best gaming chips on the market right now. As if that wasn't enough, it takes the fight to Intel well and truly and is better than their latest 11th generation i5 options on the market hands down. It's a great CPU choice. Now we're going to pair the CPU with 16 gigabytes of RAM from Corsair. One thing to note about AMD processors is that they like fast memory and they like dual channel memory. The extra bandwidth and speed is fantastic for your AMD processor's performance. And that's where this 16 gigabyte kit comes in. The white aesthetic will also match the case really nicely, a bit more on that later, with RGB up top that looks frankly awesome. Corsair have done a great job with this memory and it comes in at a pretty reasonable price point. As always, I will of course link latest pricing and availability down in the description below and you can also compare pricing and availability for all parts at geekawatt.com linked in the card section now. One of the final components then to install onto the motherboard before we move it into the case is the storage and for this build I've gone for XPG's Spectrix S20G. It's not too expensive, it's pretty easy to get your hands on and it's got an RGB heat spreader built in. Something which is really unique but will add a bit of wow factor to any build including this one today. Day. Installing the drive is really easy. We're just going to unscrew the top M.2 heatsink cover. We won't need to put this back on as our drive has its own built in before sliding the drive in, preferably at a 45 degree angle to make things that bit easier and securing it down into place. It really is that simple. With the motherboard assembly nearly complete, we're going to finish things off by installing the CPU cooler. For this build, I've gone for an air cooler, uh, Deepcool's AS500. The reason I've done that is not because there aren't some great liquid options out there. The are, but by saving $70 here, uh, that gives us more money to put into the graphics card, something which in today's market conditions is definitely appreciated. This AS500 does a great job as well, gives you some overclocking headroom which is always appreciated and looks fantastic in the process. Maybe a white cooler would look quite good in this build if we'd have gone for a white motherboard, but those are so hard to find right now that this colorway will have to do. We've used this cooler in quite a few builds before and for good reason. The large 140 40 millimeter fan does a great job of keeping the processor cool and the AS500 plus version which I'll also link in the description below and the card section now has an extra fan for push-pull uh, cooling. So nice work from deep cool there. To install the cooler, it's pretty simple. We just need to go ahead and remove the plastic brackets installed onto the motherboard and replace these with these black plastic stoppers. We're then just gonna go ahead and secure these metal brackets into place with the four thumb screws on top of the posts we've just installed. Don't forget to install a little dab of thermal paste before you do this though, otherwise you're gonna be in a whole world of pain and nobody wants that. 
The case I've gone for in this build is Corsair's IQ4000X RGB. This is a chassis that impressed me loads last year when it first came out. So much so, I surprised one of the editors here with a full system built inside the black version. With a glass panel up front, included addressable RGB fans and all the mod cons of a modern case, without breaking the bank, this is an awesome choice. Corsair did a great job here, and I think it's the best one $120 chassis on the market right now, full stop. So kudos to Corsair. I genuinely don't want to bang on about it too much, but Corsair have made such a clean chassis here. It just looks absolutely awesome. With both of the side panels removed, it makes it really easy to secure the motherboard into place with the built-in IO shield helping to guide us in to the back of the chassis. It's always a good idea as well if you've got a CPU cooler just to remove the fan for this stage, as doing so will make those motherboard holes a lot easier to access. Slide the motherboard into place and secure it down with the nine screw hole locations. Three at the top, three across the middle and three along the bottom and you can't go too far wrong. That brings us nicely on to the next components to look at in today's system before we move on to the graphics card in just a moment so be patient. Those two components are the power supply and then a couple of extra Corsair QL RGB fans. They will help with airflow but they're mainly there for aesthetic reasons and will make this case look awesome. For the power supply I've gone for Corsair's CX750F RGB. The RGB fan is a little bit overkill and not really necessary. However, it's a nice added bonus. This unit is not only fully modular, meaning you only plug in the cables you need, but it's 80 plus bronze certified and it has white cables included, which will look really nice inside the white chassis. Corsair do do this in a black version if black cables are more your thing and I'll link both of those in the description below. This video won't be a full cables and wiring guide, so make sure to check out our how to build a gaming PC detailed tutorial in the card section now if that's what you're after. We're going to go ahead though and plug all the right cables in, get the power supply screwed into place and then we're ready to pop the graphics card in. And with that we're ready to move on to the final component for today's system which is of course the graphics card. Now this is MSI's awesome Supreme X RTX 3080. What a mouthful. The 3080 is a fantastic card, one of the best on the market and it took the gaming industry by storm when it first launched in September of last year. So much so that ever since this card launched you haven't been able to buy one. Now this is mainly due to height and demand because of cryptocurrency mining and everyone's stuck at home playing more games than ever before. Hopefully low hash rate versions of this card which are muted to be coming very soon should help the situation and any 3080 card you can get your hands on is what I'd recommend picking up. It's a fantastic card with 10 gigabytes of GDDR6X video memory, support for the latest NVIDIA software suite from NVIDIA broadcast to DLSS and ray tracing and it just ticks so many boxes. Is. We'll take a deeper dive into performance a little bit later, so hold tight for that, but this is one hell of a card. When I say this thing is a bit of a hefty boy, I'm not lying, take a look at the size of this thing once it's in the system, clip it into place, look at that. I mean, that is just absolutely ridiculous. We need to secure it in properly and get it wired up, but it looks awesome. And this IQ 4000X build might just be one of my favorites today. Let's get the GPU wired up, get it fastened down, do some of our cable management, and then finally boot this system up to see just how well it performs in the biggest titles out there. But first, how good it looks in typical GeekoWatt style with an epic glam montage. Roll the montage. Lovely jubbly, now we've seen how good the PC looks, let's answer the question around how well it performs. On your screen now to kick things off is a summary, a snapshot view of all the different gaming benchmarks that we tested out. This should give you a really even idea and help you find your favourite titles performance numbers. We will be taking a closer dive into some of these titles in just a second, but as ever the unedited gaming benchmark runs can be found on our dedicated YouTube channel linked in the card section now. GTA 5 is the first title today and at 4K tested in the game's inbuilt benchmarking mode, I got 116 frames per second on average. 
The 90 and 99th percentile results were also strong and we tested as usual with Nvidia's Frameview and MSI Afterburner's Revertune Hour. Call of Duty's Black Ops Cold War is next and at 4K high settings with DLSS enabled, we got 105 FPS. We'll be coming on to Warzone a little bit later, so hang tight for that one, but Cold War looked and performed great. Apex Legends at 4K high settings gave us a solid 139 frames per second with 127 and 113 for the 90 and 99th percentile results, but suffice to say, at 1440 and 1080p, you'll be able to surpass 200 FPS. Cyberpunk is the next title today then, and at 1440p high settings with DLSS set to performance mode, we got 90 frames per second on average, with 76 and 64 for the 90 and 99th percentile results. Moving on to Fortnite at 1080p competitive settings, we got 248 frames per second with 236 and 191 for the 90 and 99th percentile results. And this is where you tune everything down to low, set the render distance to far and get the maximum frame rate possible to help you clutch that all important W. Call of Duty Warzone then is the last title on the list today and at 1440p with the latest DLSS 2.0 tech enabled in the latest COD update, we got nearly 150 frames a second with 130 and 110 for the 90 and the 99th percentile result. Showing this 3080 certainly packs as much punch as you might think and means as well you don't have to go up to the 3080 Ti if you want top tier performance. Save some cash and pick up a Supreme X. I never thought I'd be saying that. If you enjoyed today's video though give it a big old like rating, get subscribed, thank you very much for watching and as always we'll see you in the next one.